Welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us. Like I said, we'll bring you uh, Mr. W Richard Quayson uh, uh, on what the commission think about um, the Office of the Special Prosecutor. But I have two special guests in the studio with me. Teiko Saba is with Star Ghana. You're welcome, Teiko. Thank you. And just so you know, Star Ghana is partnering us uh, for this, you know, uh, for this con uh, discussion. And of course, they've been a partner for a very long time. Also in the studio with me is Ernest Ama. Ernest Ama is with Odikro. You're welcome, Ernest, as well. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk about International Democratic Day. I have my personal concept about democracy in Africa. Um, I think, well, let me forget about what I think <laughs> and take what you think. Let me start with you. International Democracy Day. For you, as Star Ghana, what does it mean? Okay, thank you very much, Gifty. Um, Star Ghana is a transparency and accountability program that supports civil society who work on governance issues. And therefore, International Democracy Day is important for us because it's about governance. It's about transparency in um, democratic processes, and therefore how citizens are able to interact with the state to be able to get their voices heard. Um, as you know, International Democracy Day is a UN day mm. that celebrates the UN Charter, which was set up as, as far back as 1945. But in Ghana here, it's important for us because of our democratic history okay. and what we have done so far until now. Um, this year is Ghana at 60. We are celebrating 60 years of independence and 25 years of democratic rule. Yeah. The lessons is that what have we learned? What are the new things that are coming up? What can we learn from our experiences? And therefore, going forward, what are we doing? This year's theme is on democracy and conflict. Okay. And we are looking at how democracy is a tool for um, making sure that conflict is solved. Okay. But sometimes also within democracy itself, there is conflict. <laughs> and how do we as there citizens... There is indeed a lot of conflict, especially definitely. if you want to compare the context within which democracy is dispensed. Exactly. If you want to look at the Western world and you want to look at the African setting, it's quite yes. different, which is what beats my mind. Yes. And I'm still dealing with it. I'm sure I'll come to a PhD thesis on that some, some way, <laughs> somehow. But, but let me find out from you, Ato Dikro. I mean, I'm, I know you're going to be speaking specifically about uh, the Special Prosecutors, though, right. which is part of... The things we believe that we will do to strengthen our democracy. But yeah. let me find out from you, the Odiku, I mean, as Odiku, your own thoughts about democracy, International Democracy Day. Does it mean anything to you? Well, it means a lot to us because um, at the center of democracy is people power. And if you are in the disp disp dispensation whereby, you know, it's playing out in the other way around, I mean, there's a cause for concern. What the other way around is? The other way around is where now citizens feel, okay, that their, um, their, their loyalty, like everything that government delivers mm. is like a favor to them. They don't feel like they it's feel they're being taken for granted. Yes. Well, it's, it's, um, it's a bit conflicting because let me cite one example mm. about the free SHS program. Yeah. Um, if our democracy was truly working, I mean, I, I, I think the excitement would have been down a bit because people have felt that we deserve it. We anyway. deserve it. Exactly. exactly. But if you see the kind of euphoria that met the announcement of the free SHS program, that clearly tells you that there is something wrong in the psyche of our democracy. It appears that we got it twisted, doesn't it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now, what about the politician delivers to us? We see it as a form of favor mm -hmm. for which we are entitled to. Yeah. And they actually demand applause. Ah. Well, that's what I'm saying, that if we truly understand what democracy is, even if they are demanding for it, mm. we won't honor that so, demand. So from what I'm gathering at the moment, it appears that we are, we, we've actually got it twisted some, some way, somehow. The good thing, by the way, is that we are, we are at the realization. We are at a place where we, have, we can see the problem. Right. Seeing the problem, they say, is how the problem solved. So mm -hmm. let me find out from, from Star Garner's perspective, what for you... Uh, are the steps that we can take going forward. I mean, this, the, this day, of course, the UN has set it, uh, set it aside. It helps us, you know, so sort of put together some few plans of how we want to go forward. Okay. Have you any, Star Ghana? Well, yes. Over the past seven years, Star Ghana has been working in strengthening transparency and accountability. Our problem analysis is that citizens do not have the space to interact with the state. They do not have the information that they will use for their interaction. And therefore, in many cases, they are marginalized and their voices are not heard, even within the democratic space that is available. Mm. Star Ghana has set upon itself to support civil society broadly to be able to access this information and therefore make use of the space 
that is available or create more space so that civil society can um, negotiate and um, discuss issues with, with um, the state and okay. therefore demand for services. Because the services within their social contract, you know, citizens are supposed to give up some of their individuality and the state is supposed to provide services. Mm. How is that happening? And um, Star Ghana is bring it, coming in to support civil society to be able to play their role better okay. within such a dispensation. And therefore, International Democracy Day. I see. It sounds like a lot of English, doesn't it? <laughs> I, think, I think it sounds like a lot of English. Um, we'll try and break it down some way, somehow. But let me find out from you. We understand, uh, OK, before we go to the special prosecutor, they, uh, the Star Ghana, for example, is an institution, it's an organization that's made up of uh, is being supported by people from the Western world, right? Yes. How then, coming back to you, because you, you mentioned the difficulty in appreciating democracy, perhaps in the way that suits our own contest, how difficult is it for you to reconcile the fact that this is an organization that has its own background and it's supporting us to deal with democracy? But we think that in our context, there has to be some, some kind of difference when we're talking about democracy. How do you reconcile the, 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 the two? So if I get your question right, um, here is a case that we are trying to get our democracy right mm -hmm. with funding from Western yes. countries. From, from countries that whose context, whose cultural context, are whose different are very different from ours. From ours. Well, um, this is how I understand it. I think the funding that is coming in is basically to strengthen our institutions and mm. also to enhance the capacity of okay. um, activists mm. and mm -hmm. CSOs to okay. better engage um, lawmakers, policymakers, mm. and government mm -hmm. as a whole. So um, the, the the challenge that I see is sometimes I feel that the direction of these funding programs is a bit deviated from our reality. You know, they are they are they are clearly um, 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 unique um, issues that we need to confront. First mm. of all, I have observed that there is this disconnection between the educated class of Ghanaians and then the uneducated. Yeah. Most of the time our advocacy is centered around those who can read and write, those who understand the issues. The bulk of Ghanaians, those at the informal sector, those who cannot speak fluent mm. English, those who do not understand the lawmaking process, mm. who do not even have a clue about what democracy entails. Most of the time we fail to take the message to them. How and do I we take the message to them on this very special And that's why we democracy. need to communicate this talk on democracy in very accessible formats and languages. Oh, we yeah. need to break the issues down so that ordinary Ghanaians can be able to relate. Yeah. I mean, we talk about you know, very complicated uh, concepts like microeconomic <laughs> indicators, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, transparency, good governance. GDP. Now, try, attempt to translate these concepts into our local languages. You, mm -hmm. you are going to have issues. Because in our local language, the best attempt or the equivalent of corruption is stealing. <laughs> you know, and stealing carries more weight in our local language. I'm a guy. When you say julojibo in ga, like it means more than saying in English that you are corrupt. Isn't that a, your own concept? Uh, the, way, the way you understand the thing. That, that's what I'm saying. So this is how we need to communicate it. If right. I, I, I mean, if you ask me to translate corruption in ga, I mean directly. You, I, won't you won't have, I, I won't be able to. The, what we have done right now is what we accuse politicians of doing all the time. We've been able to prescribe. We've been able to talk about the problem. Mm -hmm. What is the solution? Apart from taking the message to the people, how, what are the practical ways that we can do? I don't know if I should come to you as Star Ghana, yeah. since you are providing funding. Okay, so one of the first ways and one of the practical ways to do it is to find entry points that speak to citizens. Okay. What would be the entry point to speak to a citizen, say a market woman, about democracy, mm. about service delivery. So that is to say, how do you ensure that the, w the market in which you work is clean? Okay. You know, how do you demand for the judicial assembly to keep your market clean, to provide a toilet for you, to provide health facilities for your children? Some of these things are very, very practical things, and these are the entry points that we look at. So, for example, Odiko is doing fabulous work with mm. parliamentarians, right. um, you know, giving us updates on what is happening in parliament. Okay. And therefore, as a citizen, you are looking at what your parliamentarian is saying, mm. and therefore, how is the parliamentarian um, representing you in parliament? And perhaps contributing and to contributing your life to you or not, okay. you know. And therefore, these are the entry points 
that Star Gather is looking at. Looking at. But then just linking up those entry points also to policy discussions mm. at the higher level and saying that this is what has to change because on the ground, these are the issues that are there. Are and we work with partners like Odipro to make okay. that Okay, and we work, they work with partners like Joe News as well. <laughs> well let, let, do, uh, let, let's listen to the uh, Deputy Commissioner for the uh, Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice about the Special Prosecutor, uh, Special uh, Independent Prosecutor Bill. When we come back, that's one of the things that we'll be talking about. We understand that Star Ghana, is Star Ghana has taken uh, written a memorandum about this. Uh, and Odikro, Odikro will be able to take us through uh, what me this memorandum is about, but let's hear from the Schwarz. The basics are there, and that is why the stakeholders are now trying to flesh out the areas where we think we should strengthen before the bill comes out. And by the time the bill comes out, I expect that we'll have a very strong Some office. Some concerns have been raised about some clauses. You can only prosecute a large amount of corruption. Those ones are, all, as I said, being dealt with. At a discussion, a number of issues came up, and the committee took all these things on board. Mm. And the committee, in fact, even promised to invite us again when uh, the, uh, the bill is taking shape for us to look at the, um, the work that has been done on them. So, based so, on so you our think with inputs. that one, for instance, is a limitation to the office? Yes, of course it is. But as I said, you wouldn't find any bill that comes from the blocks to be perfect. Mm -hmm. That is why stakeholders are brought in to ensure that we shape the bill as, a, 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 as well as possible. So the works are going on. If, and if, I believe if you were to appoint a prosecutor with this paper as it is now, would he be independent? Um, as I said, in Ghana, prosecution is done under the authority of the Attorney General. This bill is trying to make internal arrangement under the Constitution to allow an office that can have as much autonomy as possible in dealing with prosecution. So you will not have a full-fledged independent prosecution authority. But what, we, what this is seeking to do is to improve the level of decision-making and autonomy for prosecution as much as possible, mm -hmm. given the, the, the limitations under the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So because of these limitations in the Constitution, which, which is glaring, you cannot have a totally independent prosecution authority now? No, not under the bill. And the bill recognizes that. How do we correct that gap? That's why I said it will require some amendment to the Constitution, but that's a long process. So for me, this is a good start that we should embrace, we should work with, until we get to the ultimate. Richard Quaison is Deputy Commissioner at the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice, speaking about the Office of the Independence Prose Independent Prosecutor. Um, I understand that in, in essentially he's saying that the office cannot be independent. Uh, let me find out what your thoughts are, and then we can go into the, the bill. Okay, so um, the Special Prosecutor, um, the Office of the Special Prosecutor Bill, um, is uh, essentially came about as a result of three um, things. Um, the first one has to do with um, the need to break the prosecutorial powers of the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. And secondly, to also create a specialized agency that will tackle certain aspects or categories of corruption. Mm -hmm. And then um, thirdly, to um, also ensure that um, corrupt public officials and politically exposed individuals who are caught you know, in the web of corruption are punished. And the, uh, the, the, the public money stolen are retrieved. Mm. So for such a document which fundamentally seeks to protect the public purse, I mean, uh, extensive uh, citizen engagement is key. Mm. Um, some time ago, I mean, we all heard Martin, Mr. Martin Amidu um, highlighting some critical areas of the bill and it was a very fantastic um, submission. But unfortunately, most of us did not understand what he was talking about. Why? Because we did not have the document. 
Okay. So when we charged on the document, what we did was to scan it and make it publicly available to Ghanaians. Because if you want the input of Ghanaians into this bill, you have to make the bill available to them. That's okay. the basis for making a contribution. Well, one of the ways that we can also contribute right here on this show to making, the, for those who cannot go on the internet uh, uh, to open and those who don't really like reading, <laughs> and he's, going to, he's going to, even though I must, I must uh, recommend reading to you, he's going to take us through, give us a highlight of this bill. What is there that we need to know, by all means, if we don't read the document? Okay, so this is what um, you need to know. Um, first of all, the, um, the special prosecutor, um, which is yet to be created in a way, mm. will be different from the Attorney General and then um, Yoko, and as well as um, Shraj and then uh, um, um, other, you know, governance institutions, yeah. you know, into anti-corruption investigation and uh, so um, that's exactly that and then also it also seeks to um, to ensure that this time round corrupt officials who are caught is not is not enough to prosecute them but to ensure that all properties mm. that was acquired in the process are retrieved okay you know and um, the other thing too is that it also um, seeks to um, investigate certain types like high profile corruption cases right. you know there are certain um corruption cases that if the existing institutions take up like the attorney general's department takes up you know people will perceive you know the executive influence right, because the attorney general him or herself is appointed by the president yes mm -hmm. but here is the interesting by thing the, the special prosecutor to is, is nominated appointed by the president uh -huh. <laughs> and there is another issue to the board Right. Um, in this in this bill, there is a, uh, a provision for the creation of a board. Okay. Do, do we know where to find that? I, I got the document here. Okay. I think it will be at clause four. Uh, clause, clause four. four. four? At the beginning. Yes, the governing oh, okay. body. Okay. Okay. So tell us what you were saying before. So the, the creation of the board. Um, there has been quite a negative reaction to that because, um, as much as possible, people want to make sure. I mean, I mean, activists and civil society organizations want to make sure that the executive, the invisible hands of the executive. Mm -hmm is as much as possible eliminated from okay. the, um, this bill. So okay. the creation of the board it actually becomes a window through which you know, the, it might create room for conflict of interest for uh, It might create room for the executive to actually interfere Influence. in the work yes. of the independent. So, so the, right. the, the verdict is that um, um, there's no need to establish a board. I see. Yes. Well, just so you know, let me take you through what the board is. We're ending this conversation, by the way. But there's going to be a, an extensive and comprehensive one, of course, with Evans on um, Ghana Connect. So it says governing body of the office. The governing body of the office is, board, is a board consisting of the special prosecutor, deputy special prosecutor, the auditor general, one rep of the Ghana Police Service, not below the rank of ACP, one lawyer in private practice with at least 10 years experience nominated by the Ghana Bar Association, the chief executive officer of the Financial Intelligence Center, one rep of the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice, not below the rank of director, and one person with background in intelligence and not below the rank of director nominated, nominated by the minister responsible for national security. So, and one person who is female. Okay, interesting. But, so basically... As far as you're concerned, as, as with Dikro, there's a big window through which executive of can interfere if they want to. And also conflict of interest issues. Okay, I believe that what can be done about this is what you'll be talking about with Evans uh, later on Ghana Connect. So <laughs> we won't delve so much into it. But International Democracy Day, um, just so we wrap up on that conversation, what for you is the biggest, is, is our highest level of de uh, in. Uh, our highest achievement in democracy in Ghana, and what is the lowest? I think um, the highest is sustaining the Fourth Republic for 25 years and keeping it going despite some of the challenges that we've had with it. The lowest word is also about how we have deepened democratic processes and um, ensured that the marginalized are involved in the processes. And what we find now is are that there's an apathy in, okay. in, in democratic discourse. Um, everybody waits for four years to vote, so we are voting with our thumb. Mm. But in between those four years, there are so many other processes that we need to be part of, okay. and citizens are not engaging as much as they should. So we urge citizens to engage 
ask questions, look for your assembly persons, speak to them and get your voices heard as much as possible. Getting your voices heard is a very important part of your existence as a human being, not just because you're a Ghanaian and you have to be a part of the democracy anyway. Your final word on this will be our highest and our lowest in terms of democracy. Well, our highest is ensuring um, that we have successful elections, which is very, very important. Um, and then our lowest is, like she said, the apathy. Is uh, uh, I feel we are not deeply immersed in the governance of this country. We left it to 275 legislators and uh, mm -hmm. uh, a very powerful executive very to run powerful this country. Executive. We all need to get on board because we are the central focus of democracy. It's right. for us, and we need to own it. Right. Well, we've got it all twisted, and I agree with <laughs> that. I agree with that so much. So, but you see, like I said, once we find the problem, we, we've dealt with half of the uh, uh, the solution. So, I, I've been having this conversation, of course, with with the. Um, Teiko Saba, who is with Star Ghana, and Ernest Ama, who is with Odikro. And they will be, um, actually, Ernest will be joining Evans Mensa on Ghana Connect today, and they'll be delving into this issue. He's got the whole bill in front of him. Why don't you join them and understand the issue so you can be a part of the democracy? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you. for Thank you. coming. But we're still talking about this. I'm going to have Evans in the studio in a bit. But let's hear from the commission again. Well, they've raised a few concerns about the Office of the Sp uh, Independent prosecutor but mr quason is saying that of course the commission is ready and willing to work with the office or with the person who will be appointed the special prosecutor even though they also have representation on it let's hear him when we come back it's me and evans my issue that i raised was about budgetary support for um public offices that have been established with a particular mandate who are unable to prosecute their mandate adequately because of lack of adequate funding. That was the general issue raised. Mm. A shrug one of these offices? Of course, this has been charged in the news about inadequate funding. Mm. Yes. So, so again, the question comes up that if a new office is coming in, we are, not, we are already not taking care of the offices we have, um, wouldn't your office suffer more when an office of special prosecutor is created? Look at the other side of the coin. If this new office doesn't come and we still have that gap, prosecution gap, our, our work may still not end up very well because some of the cases have to be prosecuted. So we need this office. So whether there's funding for trial or not, we need this office. The important thing is that governments are established to ensure that state institutions that require funding receive funding. So that is the business of government. Whether there's a new office established or not, government has the duty to ensure that offices that are state offices must receive funding for them to operate. Otherwise, if you establish those offices and you won't find them to function, why establish them in the first place? So that is immaterial of whether a new office is created or not. This new office, once we create it, we must also ensure that we fund it well for it to be able to achieve the objective for setting it up. So, um, Frank, how would Shraj be working with the independent pros uh, prosecutor? Um, you know, our work is a bit different in the sense that we are independent of um, the executive um, and other state uh, institutions. We, the High Court has, no, the courts have some service jurisdiction over us, and also we report to parliament. Mm. But as I said, we don't have prosecutorial powers. So when we investigate cases and there's a need for prosecution, the law says that we should refer to attorney general's office. Now, if we had called for an independent public prosecutor a, a authority, it's because we recognize the prosecution challenges that are there. Mm. So we believe that this new office should be receiving reports where from us where we are recommending prosecution to take place. Yeah. Otherwise, there are a number of cases that we don't recommend prosecution that can be dealt with administratively yeah. and try to uh, dealt with those ones without having to require prosecution. Yeah. So where we need prosecution, I believe this will be a good office that we can refer cases to for prosecution. If that is the case that it is 
that prosecution link that was needed. Why didn't couldn't we strengthen Shroud? Since you are already established as an independent, of course, I don't know about the laws behind that. But why couldn't we strengthen Shroud with those powers? I think that issue has come up a number of times, and we have looked at our powers. We looked at the rationale behind setting up Shroud. It was not set up as an as a law enforcement agency. So we have always resisted the need for prosecution power. We think that the powers that have been given to try are adequate. If we are funded well, we should be able to perform our functions without having to uh, have prosecutorial powers. Where we come across a case where we think that there's the need for prosecution, the law makes provision that it should be referred to Attorney General's office. So with this new office coming up, it will be referred to the prosecutor, the special prosecutor's office.